So I'm a big advocate of robotic colorectal surgery. I've been doing robotic surgery for over seven years now, and I'm a specialist sort of national, international trainer in robotics. Um, so I have to put my hand up and, and be very, very honest about the fact that I'm very biased towards robotic surgery, but I, I really do think it adds value in terms of the operation we do uh, in a colorectal way. And the reason for that is that uh, by attaching uh, robotic arms to the instruments that go inside the patient's body, it allows me as a surgeon to firstly see an amazing 3D high definition. I'm looking at a 3D image, which is just sort of second to none. I'm then in control of some instruments that are not just normal standard uh, laparoscopic ones that open and close, but they got a wrist so it's like having mini hands inside the body and no patient has a straight line instrument they all they've got lots of curves and you often have to work around up and down into the pelvis so having these hands there allows you to control in a really precise way how you're operating and and sort of in in addition to that not only do i just have my left and my right hand i also have an additional hand uh, a second assisting hand which allows me to sort of set up the tissue i'm going to operate on with the one hand and then have my two hands Hands there to operate so I've got absolute control of where I'm operating you've got a scaling of motion and you've lost any tremor that you might have so it allows you to do really precise surgery which is really important for the patient and then really important when you're doing a lot of colorectal surgery uh, is for ca bowel cancer and you want to make sure you're in the most precise plane and, and not leaving any of the tissue behind so I believe that that allows me to do that robotically the best way I possibly can so that's really important in terms of the oncological cancer outcomes but it's also combined with the benefit that because I'm doing it with the, these little instruments inside the body it's I'm doing a keyhole operation and that means that the patient will recover much quicker than if I've done a big cut and done it the old traditional way. So it allows my patients to firstly have a really precise, accurate operation as if I was doing it open, but then recover as if I'm doing it like a keyhole laparoscopic operation because they've only got some little cuts in their tummy. Those cuts hopefully aren't as painful because the robotic arms are very stable on the tummy wall. And it means that my patients can be up and about eating and drinking as soon as possible. I like to get them home within three or four days of a major bowel operation. And, 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 and the robot just allows me to do these really difficult things that I would really struggle to do keyhole hole laparoscopically so it's got it's multiple benefits and it's benefits to me as well because i'm six foot four and i'm not crouching over a big patient for hours i'm sat at a robotic console i've got my whole team they know exactly what we're doing they can all see what we're doing so we all do a really good job for the patient who then has the benefits of recovering well going home quickly and then hopefully in the longer term having better cancer outcomes robotic surgery is basically keyhole surgery, which is laparoscopic surgery. And lots of surgeons out there can do fantastic operations laparoscopically. However, the robot has this ability, allows me to firstly see in 3, 3D, which not all laparoscopic surgeons could do. It also allows me to have these instruments that are articulated. So I've got like little hands inside the patient, which allows me to work around bends and into difficult, tight, narrow spaces. It also allows me the, an additional arm to control. So I'm in control of everything there rather than relying on an so inexperienced assistant. I can do this all myself, or I have you know, an assistant who just has to do minor things for me. So I've got real control compared to laparoscopic, but I also I don't have the fatigue of having to physically stand at the bedside. I can, if I'm exhausted, I can have a moment's breath, I can have a drink, I can talk to my colleagues because I'm not immersed in the patient scrubbed up, which again it leads me, allows me to have sort of clearer thinking and make sure that I'm making the best decisions for my patient while I'm operating. So you have the benefits of that. You still like laparoscopic, the both of you, it's keyhole surgery, so they're little cuts in the tummy, so that means you should recover. You know, both of those should recover well after an operation, so I'll be able to go up and about and get home in a shorter period of time compared to the alternative, which is an open operation and open oper open surgery is still the gold standard and if you can't do a keyhole you can't do a, a, a robotically you might have to convert to an open operation but the trouble with an open operation is with a big cut and a lot of handling of the bowel there's a higher chance that your patient will have some sort of recovery you know um, complications in the recovery like wound infections take a little bit longer for the bowels to get going and generally the length of stays a bit longer. So you've, you've kind of lost all of that if you do an open operation. An open operation sometimes is the best thing because you get your hand in, you can physically feel the lump and you can do it. But I believe I get 
a, probably a better view by doing it robotically because I can, I've got my 3D view. And by the fact I've got my little hands, I, I sort of negate the loss of that sort of feedback with the, with the hands you get from open surgery, which is kind of loss of laparoscopic surgery. So, so the alternatives are open surgery, keyhole laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery. And for me, the robot offers the best of both worlds. So when people think about robotic surgery who haven't done it, they, they imagine that me as a surgeon, I walk in a room, I press a button and just walk off and leave some automated robot to, to do the operation. And this could go, go out of control. And we've all seen horror movies of sort of AI of the future with sort of robotics taking over. This is not the case. Uh, what it really is a master slave is the official term. And what it means is they're just robotic arms that I control. They have no autonomy. They don't do anything for themselves. They just enhance my view. So there is no disadvantage to me from using the robot over doing it laparoscopically or open. It, you know, any big colorectal operation is a high risk operation and they all have com potential complications and uh, the first one is you know just during the operation that is difficult and you can't do it keyhole and you have to make a cut and do it the old-fashioned way there are all the complications in terms of operating on a big bit of bowel with on the main blood vessel the aorta and all you can get bleeding and you know damaging other you know, bits of bowel so that they're all still there but i like to think the, re the risk is reduced by doing it robotically compared to my own laparoscopic skills any of these operations down the line, you can have troubles with um, recovery and specifically in bowel surgery, we worry about when we join two ends of bowel together, that those two ends of join don't heal, which is called an anastomotic leak. And there is still unfortunately problems with anastomotic leaks, whichever way you do the operation, robotically, laparoscopically or open. So all of these things are still there, uh, but I certainly would say that the robot does not give you any additional risks and what it does is it hopefully reduces them by giving you pieces of kit that help you along the way. Like, for example, with the robot, you can inject a, a special green dye that allows you to check the blood supply of the, to the bowel itself to make sure that the, the, the two ends of bowel are healthy and then we should heal together. So there are no specific risks of the robot. It won't run away and do the operation without you. Any, any colorectal operation is a challenge and the success is dependent on many factors, the patient itself, but also how good your surgeon is. And a bad surgeon with a robot is still a bad surgeon. They're not going to do a good job. So you, you really need to pick your surgeon wisely. I've had the opportunity to train surgeons all across the UK and across Europe. And, and you can see that if you have a great surgeon, they're always already doing a good job. The robot just allows them to do a, a, a slightly better job or, or more easily. And success in, in your practice is, is really an individual thing. I do a lot of my cancer cases here in, in the UK in, in an NHS hospital and we, and we, you know, we promote our outcomes uh, of recovery, our, our recurrence rates. And so your success is dependent on your team and what you're doing with, with the robot and how you're recovering them. So the success rate should be good. In our own hands, we, are, we haven't yet had a local recurrence. We've had patients after cancer surgery. We have had patients who've developed disease in other parts of their body, but certainly where we've been specific with the robot, we've done a really good precise job. In terms of clinical recovery, you still will get complications if you do this robotically, but the evidence we have in our trust is that the complication rates are slightly lower done robotically than they are done keyhole laparoscopically or open, but it will really depend on your surgeon and, and, and the right operation is the right operation for you done by the right surgeon. So success is about you as a patient recovering from your surgery, getting back to your quality of life and having had a successful outcome in terms of definitive treatment of, of you know, in particular cancers, but also inflammatory bowel disease or diabetic disease and getting your quality of life back. I believe that you can get that quality of life back quicker done robotically and more precisely done robotically, but that's my personal experience and my personal preference of the robot. Everyone has their skill sets and their values and you need to uh, meet your surgeon and talk to them about what they want to offer for you. I think all patients are potentially ideal candidates for robotic surgery. There, there, there is no reason why you can't have your surgery done 
robotically for, for a colorectal problem. There are sometimes challenging in, challenges in terms of getting inside someone's tummy to doing an operation keyhole if you've had lots of uh, previous abdominal surgery or you've got troubles with a big complicated hernia. But these would be, you know, these are rare. And, and, and even then, I personally see the robot as an instrument just to allow me to do complicated keyhole surgery. So, so hopefully all patients are ideal. Or ideal. I mean, I particularly patients with a higher BMI, we, we find that we're more successful at doing the operations keyhole uh, robotically because it allows us to facilitate the challenges in the pelvis or, or just getting around the tummy. But, but the, there is no one who shouldn't be an ideal candidate for it. And in terms of who shouldn't have an operation robotically, uh, it'd be only those people who don't believe in the surgeon who's going to do it for them robotically. I would, I would, if you don't believe in the robot or you don't think your surgeon does, then you shouldn't be having a robotic operation. Um, there are obviously some patients, again, who've got complicated tummies who trying to do a keel operation is not the way forward. And then you wouldn't be offered a robotic operation and your surgeon shouldn't offer you a robotic operation. But really, uh, the, the, there should be no reason why if you have a, 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 a you know the right surgeon who've got the right skill set that they shouldn't be offering you a robotic uh, operation.